What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called The Day of the Trial. So a little bit of backstory. I have a mild case of autism where I don't pay enough attention and get easily distracted. Basically, my attention span is pretty low to where sometimes I daydream too often. Another thing to add, my parents are divorced, so it would work out for them. You see, my dad is the entitled jackass of the story, and my mom is a much more civilized and sane person. My dad is the kind of dad that you wouldn't want to ask for help on homework or anything, as he would get upset if you do not get a problem right after trying it out 20 times and to when it is 3 in the morning. My mom, on the other hand, gave me some nice tutors that helped me with my work and thus helped me with my work in a much calmer fashion. My dad was always very strict and unbearable. I still remember as a child, my dad would force me to read SpongeBob SquarePants kids books and get real upset if I don't pronounce a word correctly when I was still a child, not wanting to look at the books after that. And there's SpongeBob SquarePants, a beloved kids cartoon character. Don't get the wrong idea. He doesn't physically mistreat me by any means at all. He was just strict beyond belief. Now, my innocent mind didn't understand what a divorce was at the time until it was explained. I got two Christmases and two birthdays. I saw this as an absolute win. Unfortunately, as I grew up, I began to be afraid of my own dad more. I would complain being at his house. I would flinch and ask, what do I do when he calls me and because of him, I became a bully to my mom. Being angry all the time and holding grudges against her and my sisters when I was eight. Like a school bully bringing the rage from their home to the school. I regret those days and want to smack the anime edgelord 2005 grudge holding, screw you mom, you'll never understand, out of the past version of me if I traveled back in time. One more thing to add. When an autistic child, or any child with a mental disability, at the age of 18, has to decide to go to which parent's house to get some help in the real world. They can decide if I am capable of handling what reality has thrown at me, and due to my autism being mild, I was an okay kid growing up. A few tantrums here and there, but it all worked out in the end. Besides, every other child has been through it. We grow, moving on. Now, a few months before the trial, there was a lady that would come to both houses and analyze how life is like. She analyzed my mom as well as her living standards and she did well. She also went to my dad's place with me there. I explained what goes on at that house, even said something risky. So how would you say your father is like? The lady asks. Well, it's quite stressful and honestly, me and my sisters are afraid of doing anything. It's like trying to stop the countdown of a nuclear bomb. I was honestly surprised my dad didn't step in at all or even scolded me once she left. After her, there was another person that came. A guy whose job was to interview me and know what I want, which parent to go to. I was hesitant of choosing sides, so I went for both parents. The problem was later when I found out that my dad was listening in on my conversation with the man. Kinda raises some red flags, wouldn't you say? At first, I didn't want to decide between the two because my love for the both of them. I thought of going to both houses for advice. That is, until I realized my dad wouldn't listen to my mom if it meant saving his life. He did everything he can to get me to be with him. Most notably, forcing me to bring friends over when I just want to have a me day. Don't get me wrong, my friends are great. It's just constantly forcing me to be with them isn't going to help. And here is where the real story begins. If you read this far, I congratulate you for enduring unnecessary moments. Because of my college schedule, my trial was a week before my birthday to make things easier. I was at my dad's week at the time, so he drove me to the courthouse. We were then crossing the street, and this is what happened. So, OP, what do you want for your birthday? Dad asked. I knew he was trying to buy me. That darn snake. But I played along, saying, I sent you a list. I send my dad a list of things I want should Christmas and my birthday come up that mostly involve games. Call me spoiled, I'm well aware of that. So we enter and I was pretty nervous, so I sat at a bench next to the door. My mom, unlike my dad, didn't pressure me to her house. She only tells me, OP, it's gonna be okay, just pick whatever house you want. She never pressured me to do things her way and I respect her for that. 
Anyway, it was time for the trial, and when we went to our seats, the seating arrangement was from left to right, mom, me, dad. Now, I want you to remember that order. So, a couple of cases go by. I didn't really pay attention to them. One was somewhat similar to my case, but with some grandma with Alzheimer's. I don't know. It really isn't my business. It was our turn, and we approached the judge with my lawyer that's been hired by the state. Now, when my mom heard about me wanting to be with both of them to get through my life, she was very hesitant, not wanting to do this. But my blind booty didn't realize this until I said, Mr. Lawyer, I have changed my mind and want to be with my mom, and if you can, think you can get me to speak to the judge privately? I tell him, and I didn't know how my mom was feeling, for your information. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Your Honor, I don't represent Mrs. G, but I don't think she wants to share custody, and my client has told me he wants to be with her instead of both of them, and my client would also like to request that he speaks to you in private. Mr. Lawyer tells the judge, I can tell my dad was shocked. I didn't confirm it because I was too worried of what will happen. I will speak to OP and find a solution. We will take a five minute break and during the break I will reach my verdict. The judge says, we return to our seats and this was the new order. Mom, me, space, dad. I was absolutely terrified and I couldn't even look at him. If you looked closer, you could see me slightly shaking in fear. I felt a hand on my shoulder and heard, Oh, Pay, do you want me to drop out? Because I can drop out if you want me to. Just tell me what you want from Dad. It's like him to keep on pushing something when things don't go his way. Mom realized this and defended me saying, Mr. G, don't bother him, you are scaring him. To which he responded with, I'm not bothering him, I just want to know what he wants. I went to the restroom and then washed my hands. I leaned to the sink and asked myself, Oh, P. What the hell are you doing? I didn't think I would make it that far, in all honesty. I called my older sister and told her how the trial was going. She was comforting me when all of a sudden, the bathroom door swung opened by dad. OP, they're ready for you. I had to hang up right away while I felt my soul rip straight from the back of my head. Who are you calling? Dad asks. Just a friend, I respond quickly. OP, don't lie to me. Dad responds in a guilt-tripping tone. No, I'm serious. It was just a friend. I said after he said that. I told the judge what goes on after he handed me to a Snickers bar and reaches his final verdict. The new order is as follows. Me, mom, space, dad. The court was over and we went to leave. We also had to go and get something for my community college and my dad was going on about how we were going to go there, we're going to get the thing. Mom knew that I didn't want to be with him after that and said that she will take me. He got real upset and left through the front door. He noticed me and mom leaving to the basement. Hey, exit is right here, he says to her, but she didn't respond. Admittedly, I too didn't understand why we were going down there until she explained that there is an exit at the basement. God bless whoever thought of that when making the courthouse. We watched dad storm off angrily to his car and drove off. I redialed my sister and told her what happened. Meanwhile, Dad called my mom and scolded her for brainwashing me and all that stuff. She was having none of it and hung up. After she hung up, she gets a text from him saying, Grossera, which is Spanish for rude. Dad is from Peru, Mom from Mexico. After we did my thing, I was very hesitant to enter the house. But to my surprise, he acted like the trial didn't even happen. Like everything was fine. The fact he was so calm honestly made me a bit more on edge. And that is what happened on the day of the trial. Ooh, okay, yeah, that sounds like a rough experience. And uh, your dad definitely didn't do anything to make it any easier. Um, and it's sad that these things happen. Thankfully, my parents got a divorce when I was like an infant, so I never had to choose. It wasn't really that much of a trial, though, to be honest, um, because things happened. <laughs> <laughs> made the decision easy. Um, but yeah, I'm glad things more or less worked out in the end for uh, our Redditor here. Because that must have been a pretty, pretty rough experience, emotionally at least. This story's called, You're Disabled, You Shouldn't Be at the Front of the Line. Okay, so I was at Alton Towers, where I was in the disabled line. For some context, I'm not good with crowds, as I have Asperger's and cannot handle waiting in lines. So, when I get to Alton Towers, I get a wristband that allows me to skip to the front of the line. 
Sorry about any errors in spelling, I'm on mobile and am just bad, bad at English. So to the story. I'm waiting in the disabled line for the latest ride, The Wicker Man. The disabled line is a bit long, as it is the newest line. But I was fine until the entitled mother comes up, no wristband, and goes to the back of the line with her son, entitled kid. So we don't question it and wait until we get to the front of the line. Entitled mother gets to the front of the line. The operator asked entitled mother for her son to show his wristband. She says, What wristband? We didn't know about a wristband. Can you just let us go? The operator says, No wristband. No entry. Get to the normal line. She then goes, Just let us pass. We want to get on the ride. He said, No. Get out. I'm getting slightly annoyed from the noise, but stay quiet, as I am way too much of a wimp to say anything, until she says, But he shouldn't be on the ride anyway, he's not disabled, he's not in a chair or anything, he should leave and you should let me on as my kid has anxiety and he should go on without getting through the line. Now I'm really annoyed, so I finally explode and yell at her. I am disabled, but if stupidity was a disability, you would be the most disabled person in the world. So she yells at me, Go away, you intellectually disabled. You shouldn't be here anyway. Just go home and F off. The operator then tells her she has to leave or he will be forced to call the police. She huffed and left. Not really a crazy ending like normal stories, but I'm bored and have nothing to do, so I thought I would put this here. Okay, so this is kind of unrelated, and I apologize, but this is actually really interesting. Um, I heard Disneyland, or Disney World, I'm not sure which one, it could be both. They have, like, a sort of super fast pass kind of thing magic, okay? So what they do is they have someone screen your kid for anxiety issues or something, and if they determine that they have anxiety, they will let them cut in front of literally everyone, even fast pass people. So that's pretty interesting, and we gotta appreciate Disney for doing that, you know? I guess it does kind of work here because the entitled mother actually might have a reason if their kid does have anxiety, but she definitely went about that the wrong way. You know, she was a jerk. This story's called Entitled Aunt and Entitled Sister Ruin My Life. Taco Laundry Disco Rabbit at Bottom. So I have an entitled sister and an entitled aunt who ruined my life completely. They give me no rights to speak. They choose what they want me to wear, have, and choose who I should be friends with. They are also homophobic and racist. Mobile and English warning. Some context to the situation. This started yesterday. My aunt came from London to visit and stay for a week. My sister loves my aunt. I despise her. My aunt and my sister go along really well with each other. Not only for games, but to also ruin my life. They said it themselves that they love seeing me cry. They know about my depression and anxiety. They know everything, but they don't give a crap. Yesterday, they tried embarrassing me in front of one of my friends, now boyfriend, and in front of the whole darn school. Cast. Entitled sister. Entitled aunt. Me. Boyfriend. Fred what? Friend who? So I woke up at 6 a.m way too early for a normal school day here because my aunt forced me to. As I came downstairs, I found out the hard way that the dog pissed on the steps and my aunt didn't bother cleaning it, so I stepped on it. In embarrassment, I quickly ran to the bathroom to wash really quickly to get ready for school. As I was washing, either my aunt or my sister, or the dog, took my homework out of my bag and ripped it. When I came back from the bathroom, in shock, I found what's remaining of my homework. In stress, I tried my best to find glue or tape or anything to get the math homework back together. This was followed by a conversation. Wow, Leif, would you look at that? You're so irresponsible. When will you learn to take care of your stuff? Who, who did this? The dog? I started to tear up. Probably. Anyways, you're a very stupid child. Probably everything on that piece of paper was wrong. The dog made a good choice. <laughs> Idiot. Both turn away into my mom's room. Keep in mind, my mom wasn't home at the time. Crying, I ran into my room to change into my clothes. Black hoodie, gray leggings, and black shoes. By the time I came down, my sister screamed. Ow, oh, what are you wearing? This stuff isn't for girls. Ew, you boy. 
I am non-binary. But shut up, you're wearing what I give you. My sister dragged me upstairs and forced me to wear a pink hoodie and white leggings with white shoes. After that, when I was about to go downstairs, my sister pushed me on accident and I fell and hit my head. I had enough. I was already crying so much. I was so stressed. When it was 7 o'clock, I ran to school, backpack on, still crying and with an empty stomach. I arrived to school at 8 o'clock because I wasted time venting to the trees nearby me. When I was at school, my aunt and sister kept calling me. I'm guessing to get me in trouble for having my phone on. Jokes on them, my ringer is off 24-7 during school. After five periods, lunchtime came. I have more male friends than female friends, so usually you'd see me hanging out with a guy most of the time. I was hanging out with boyfriend before he even became my boyfriend. Wow, you're wearing pink? That's rare. Shut up. I told him about everything that happened at my home before I even came to school. That's horrible. Who'd do such a thing to you? Those two. I wish my aunt would move out. I wish my sis would move out. My mom is the only one who understands me in this household. Where is your mom? At her job. I get a call. Oh, um, I'm getting a call right now. One sec. The call was from my aunt. She checked my grades online. She was screaming at me saying, How dare you get an A in math? Only get an A plus when you come home you're getting punishment. Oh, crap. Boyfriend saw me crying and he took my phone from my hands and continued the call. Who is this? Oh, what? a boy. His OP friends with you. Yeah. You got a problem with me being a guy? Boys are disgusting. She's a girl. She should be with girls. Boyfriend fully offended. Hey. I snatched the phone. We'll talk later. I end the call in distress. Boyfriend asked me if he could help me out. If he could be the guy I needed to talk to in stressful times. I gladly accepted. We exchanged numbers. By the time school ended, I was about to walk home until... OP! She screamed so loud, all the kids outside stared at me. Some laughed. You're in a big trouble. I heard what happened over the phone. You're gonna freaking die. I Well, I hope you do. Racial slur. The kids started to gasp. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to do. I just didn't. Then comes boyfriend. He had just left the school and he sees what is happening. He runs towards entitled sister. Hey, step off. Excuse me, boy? You heard me. Leave OP alone. They have done nothing to you. She was born. That's what she did to me, you disgusting guy. Why are you even on this? I start having an anxiety attack. Guy's not here. The whole school is what? Listen here, you little piece of dookie. The mistake here is you. I don't want to see you near OP. OP has their life ruined because of you. Stay away from my angel, boy! I freaking had enough. Boyfriend was about to throw a punch when friend one and friend two came and stopped him. What the heck is happening? Boyfriend explains everything. Holy, this lady needs to take a chill pill. Stay out of this, you disgusting boys! Excuse me? We're OP's friends. When they need help, we come and help. You need to stay off, OP. I don't want to make this post so long, so I'm just going to say here, a full argument took place. In front of my school, everyone watching, and Entitled Aunt tried to slap me but failed miserably. By the time I got home, I told my mom about this and she beat the freaking crap out of my aunt and sister. I admit, I laughed so hard at the time. Both my aunt and sister are leaving tomorrow. Well, Redditor, at least they are gone, you know, and your boyfriend isn't, so you got that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.